Okay, I would like to call a meeting to order of the Freetown Water and Sewer Commissioners on July 28th at 9 a.m. And, uh, oh, I guess I gotta read that long thing, huh? Pursuant to the Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 <clears throat> order suspending certain portions of the Open Meeting Law GLC 30A Section 18 and the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations for the number of people that may gather in one place. <clears throat> this meeting of the Freetown Board uh, oh, no, that says board. Uh, water and sewer commissioners will be conducted by a remote precipitate, uh, participation to the greater extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote precip precipitation by members of the public can be found on the town of Freetown's website, freetown.gov, for this meeting. Members of the public who wish to view the meeting will be able to view the meeting via live stream at youtube.com Freetown Mass. <clears throat> no in-person attendance of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technology means. In the event that we are unable to do so, Despite best efforts, we will post it on the town's YouTube channel and audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after this meeting. Okay, after reading all of that, um, attending the meeting are Paul Sadick. Steven Chandler. Kevin Damaris. What happened to Lee? I don't know. Lee's there with Mary. Helena Maria. Maria's got her mic muted. Um, Helen Gordon, Environmental Partners, uh, Senior Project Manager. Maria, can Maria? you hear us? Yep. Maria Prue, Environmental yeah. Partners, um, Project Engineer. We can, we can barely hear you, Maria. Okay. I'll try to talk louder. Maria Prue, Environmental Partners, um, Project Engineer. Okay. Lee? Lee Baumgartner, Water Commissioner. Okay. Everyone is, oh, Kevin, you're there too, right? I am. Okay. All right. I guess, uh, Helen, I'll kind of turn the meeting over to you if you want to go down the agenda. Um, we'll be. Uh, Absolutely. Um, Chandler, can you um, give me presentation skills so, um, so I can um, bring the agenda up and then also bring up some um, spreadsheets that we can speak to as we go through? I don't know. Let's see. I've never yeah. done this. So Hold host, on. so it's share screen, host yep, disabled, right. yep. Yeah, one participant can share screen at a time. Multiple can share screen simultaneously. Advanced sharing options, let's see. Uh, one participant can share multiple, only to host all participants, how's that? Sure. And one participant at a time, that would make sense. Who can, Okay. Start sharing screens only to host. All okay. This. Everybody okay, see my screen? Right. Yeah, there, there we go. go. All right. Okay, gentlemen, as I had said uh, in my email, this is a, a working meeting. So what we wanted to do today is go through 
uh, what we've done to analyze the rates and what some of our recommendations are. This is a conversation with you um, in terms of where you want to set the rates, how do you want to set them moving forward, and some decisions associated with um, revenue in, uh, um, capture. So what I'd like to start doing is just do a background uh, to review uh, what we took into consideration to show you that um, we've spent some detailed time finding out uh, the information on revenue and uh, expenses for Freetown. Chandler's been a fantastic help associated with this. Uh, it, it certainly was a, a challenge getting some information together because um, some of it isn't digital, some is, isn't. So it took some time and that's why we're um, here today. And so to begin, on the background, from the standpoint of the water and sewer expenses, currently your water and sewer expenses are funded through fixed charges, which are the service fees, volumetrics charges, which are the quarterly um, volumes that the customers use, and then typically any shortfalls in the budget um, are from transfers from the town's general fund. Um, your annual revenue, um, you have your O&M expenses, your water purchases, um, the sewer charges from both, the water purchases from Fall River and New Bedford. So this is what your annual revenue needs to cover. It needs to cover your sewer charges for Fall River, from Fall River as well. Now, in addition to the expenses that annual revenue have to cover, we include debt service and capital improvement fundings. Currently, you don't have any debt service, so we didn't include that in, in the future um, three years that forward that we're looking at because there's no plans currently for any capital improvement funding. So what we've prepared here is a basically a living spreadsheet that you're gonna be able to use moving forward as well um, to continually assess your rates over the years. And we have places in the spreadsheet that allow you to add debt service and capital improvement funds if that were to occur in the future. Um, in terms of the water and sewer rate study goals from our conversations with Chandler um, and you initially, you know, the, the goal is to prepare a rate structure that is fair and equitable, um, reduce and eliminate as much as possible any general fund transfers from the general fund in the town over to the enterprise fund and to really have the enterprise fund financially sufficient on its own. Those are the goals that we set. Um, the parameters we looked at in order to work through what our recommendations are is to be consistent with industry best practices, um, to recreate revenue stability, um, the ability to cover unanticipated water system infrastructure costs. This is one of the things I think that um, the current rate structure that you have doesn't necessarily um, lend itself well to assisting in that ability. And when I talk about unanticipated chart uh, water system infrastructure costs, it's anything from um, continued rate increases from Fall River in New Bedford to um, any kind of uh, physical operation or maintenance uh, unanticipated uh, work on the water system that you might encounter over a good course of a year. Uh, and then above all that it's defensible of challenge. So again, this heart, harkens back to the goal of rate structure being fair and equitable. And that's really what we're, the goal is um, always on these uh, kind of analysis. So 
What we first did is look at your current enterprise fund, both the, uh, and then we put together proposed expenses. So we did a look back for to 2016 on what historically you have had for expenses. And then we, um, we, we proposed out expenses based on your historic and what we knew. And here are some of the assumptions that we had to make and I wanna go through them and I would like to stop when I, after I go through them to make sure that we've got these correctly and if there's any other assumptions that you want us to take into consideration that we haven't as yet. So the one assumption we did make is that Fall River New Bedford will continue their historic rate increases. So we've been seeing on an average, the rate increases have been on the Fall River end about 6% a year and on the New Bedford end, it's about 4% a year. And the reason for their rate increases is their operation and maintenance requirements on their end to provide you the water. And then also their cost of salary, their salaries and benefits and those type of uh, costs that continue to rise with inflation. Then um, we took into consideration based on your history, your own projected increases for salary and benefits. So if we look over here at, um, let me see. Um, so this is the options. Um, Maria, before, well, I, while I'm getting started, actually I will bring up, I wanna bring up that um, spreadsheet that we have um right now because there's one point i do want to discuss specifically um okay so can everybody see this yeah, okay. Good. okay great so uh, what i want to focus on here is the um expenses and you can see that between 2020 and 2021, the expenses go up exponentially. And Chandler, I'm sure you can, you know, this relates to the Fall River metering and yeah. the fact that they've been under charging for a while. So we had to take that into consideration and that's why you see this jump in. We just, wait, 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 one second. Kevin, are you there? I'm here. I, I don't have a copy of that um, spreadsheet. Is there a way you can send it in an email? Well, I, I would assume that they're going to give it to us because I don't oh, have yeah. a copy of it. Y yes. But yeah. more importantly, she's talking about a dramatic increase because of Far River undercharging us. But those figures, are they taken in consideration? the credit they, they owe us for the bleeding of the systems? That's a very important question. In Chandler, we're still waiting to get that, correct? Yeah, we had just, um, they had given us something uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, as far as I know, it hasn't been officially finalized. Um, it's gone to the to the commissioners um, to review. That's a very important uh, piece of information that's not included in this spreadsheet. And so that's one, that's one of the things why we wanted to go through the assumptions today. Okay. Right. We're gonna need that in order to finalize yeah. the rates. Right. Okay. And so we've been holding, that. that's one of the reasons why we've been um, holding off. Okay, Do that's we, why you have a dramatic increase in those figures. Because they Correct. owe us a significant credit. Okay. Right. And so right. It, with that said, with their new meter, they're going to be, um, they're going, the charges are going to be going up higher as well. Correct, right. our Chandler? Credit, our credit is roughly um, around $400,000. Okay. And that's a one-time credit, right? 
Nope. That's good. That's for the for the uh, 2019 and 2020 uh, flushing season or bleeding season. Uh -huh. we, we flush so many gallons of water per day. And that will be, and that will be consistent on a yearly basis, right? Yeah, it won't be that much because it'll be just one year. They had put the two together because they hadn't given us the credit at all since the beginning of this right. uh, flushing program. Right. Mar Maria, we did not take that into consideration, did we? Or did we? So we, we did take it into consideration going forward, but not, um, not in the past. So not for 2019 and 2020. Um, okay, so in 2021, do we have it um, in? We should do I... under proposed revenue. If you go to okay. the tab. All right, let me check that. It, 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 you cannot have included go. it in in 21. I, I doubt that you included the credit in 21. Or in maybe in the expenses tab. That's proposed revenue expenses. Yeah, so we have um, abatement for bleeders for 2021 through. Okay, um, it's right here. So part of the reason for the big increase in 2021 is because historically the Fall River meter has been underreporting, which we understand that was changed out in 2019. Um, but basically, you were reporting negative unaccounted for water. So the customer meters were report the sum of the customer meters were reporting much higher than the sum of your Fall River and New Bedford meters. So we've based our analysis on the sum of the customer meters, not your historic master meter volumes. So that's where that big rate increase or big increase in cost is coming from. We were getting paid on what the customers used. Excuse me? We, we were getting paid on what the customers used when the Fall River meter was not working. So the revenue on that's proposed revenue, let me, existing revenue. Um, so total, this is total revenues were. What year is that? What year are we looking yeah, at? Yeah, that is 2020. Which one, what column is 2020? Column F. You should be, you should be able to lock in the heading. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah. Please do. Okay, so these are your total water and sewer annual revenues for from 2016. From 2020. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. So for 2017 to 2019, the total expenses these were the total expenses. And then this is what we're anticipating for the future. And I'll tell you where that retain what that retained earnings line is one of the things we want to talk about. Um, but what you've been doing is historically transferring from your general fund into your enterprise fund to balance the budget. And we have recommended that for future that the rates cover the expenses and so that that would end up being zero in the future. Transferring from the general fund to our fund? Yeah, Chandler? Some, Those are for some special of, articles. Yeah, some of the, the, from the general fund would have been for um, 
like the the uh, project up at the town line with the um, what's it called the bypass right and some other um, I don't know what 2017 is or 20 I can't say 2017 is 194, 770. Yeah. yeah. Those, those, those transfers were for the betterment of the town. Okay. The entire town. Right. And by removing any type of special transfer or special article and removing it from the enterprise fund overburdens the 700 customers that don't get any benefit of that. Those are special projects that were benefiting the town for expansion of certain businesses and so forth. That's okay. why they, that's why it was done that way. Okay. okay. All right. No, that's important to know. It's very important to know, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So in that should be I, I can't hear her. You can't hear me? No, no. I thought Maria was talking. Oh, sorry. So then the question becomes, from my perspective on those transfers and special articles, is there a amount that we think you want to carry on an annual basis at all? Or you know, we can, we'll set it at zero, and then depending on what the year is, it just gets transferred in, and then that would be an expense and a payment, and it would uh, end up being zero, for example. See, the, the, the thing is, when we put together the O&M information in terms of the cost, the, um, and Maria, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the O&M costs did not specifically have a line item that was, this was for a townwide improvement or something like that. Maria, can you go on? You're on mute. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it was basically just like salary and um, and expenses, right? And expenses. Right. So, so what I'm saying, Chandler, is the when we put together all the expenses and the the um, paperwork that we were provided associated with the pr expenses. It was in there, but we couldn't, it wasn't a separate line item that we could say, okay, this was the expense and the special article 194 paid for it. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so the, uh, what you have in transfer and special articles could be uh, transfers from retained earnings. N yes? Not if it came from the general fund. No. no. No, but no. In fact, what, you, what you're doing there's nothing, there's nothing on, on this chart from retained earnings that's um, you know that's been transferred over. Which I know in the past four years since I've been here, we have transferred from retained earnings. So but what is your... those are our earnings? Our retained right. earnings. Right. Okay. Exactly. So so where are so in the information that you provided us with chandler and so this is what we're, why we're having this conversation today is yeah. making sure that we have the right assumptions paul right um is we don't have a separate line item for your retained earnings what is the percentage of retained earnings that you've been keeping um i'd have to get that from kim okay so because, because all of those documents all of the all of the um the printouts from Kim should I would I would thought or I thought that they were listed in there, um, you know anything that was transferred. Um, but I'd have to look, I'd have to double check. So uh, I, so I, that's an important piece that's that's uh, missing here is right. is that um, the data that we had did not show that you had. Um, any retained earnings. And so one of our recommendations was that you make sure that you um, fund retained earnings on a regular right. basis. Did, did we, you go right to the town accountant for these figures? Yeah, I did, yeah. 
well, I mean, the way you, if if these are special articles where money was funded by the town under special articles, you have overstated the expenditures for those years because they right. are not expenditures that apply to the water department. Right. Okay. So what I, what I'll do is I'll I'll get a breakdown from Kim so that. Right. So is there. this? So I'm thinking it, so the trans, the special articles, so the transfer, this transfer from general funds, which is what I believe it said on the um, spreadsheet that we got, was that correct? Or it might have just said transfers. It may have just said transfers. If yeah, it says because... transferred, that is your retained earnings? So the, well, the... So we've got a spe these special articles right here. Right which are just special articles and they come and go and they cancel each other out. If you expect you have an expense of 29, 310 and you put in bypass and it's to the betterment of the town, you had a special article that paid for that and you didn't pay, right. pay for it out of your enterprise fund, which is the right thing to do. Right. That's okay. What, that's, that's what that 60, I believe that 63,000 is, is that one in 2017? So in two, sorry. I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, let me phrase it. Yeah, that, yeah. that was the bypass, Chandler. Right, right, right. Right. So this was the bypass. Okay. So yeah. this this was, was the 131 the bypass or the 63 the bypass? And see, this is why we well, don't. The 63 from the general fund, yeah. was, I believe, right? But is that. One. So I, we need to make sure that we're um, using the same language. So is the yeah. general funds your retained earnings or general yeah. funds from the town? General, general funds fund. from the town. Yeah. From the town. Right. So I don't have anything in here from retained earnings of retained earnings. We don't okay. have any information on that. So um, we were frankly going on the assumption that you, did, you didn't have them and which surprised me. Yeah. Um, no, so. I'll, I'll do it. I'll get a I'll get a list. I'll I'll get it separated as to exactly what the um, what the transfers were transfers from start, the general right. fund. What the special the articles were from the our reserve fund. Um, right. So I'll get that separated out, and that way, uh, it'll be yeah, it'll be accurate and clear. Yeah, Kim okay. has all Kim has all that data. The town accountant. I mean, right. she should be able to provide it directly to them, for crying out loud. And her, and her expenditure reports, um, it may not, uh, do not disturb. It, uh, it may not be listed. It may just be, say, transfer um, on but her. She, right, but okay. she, can, she can clarify she can, that stuff. Exactly, yep. Right. I'm going to talk, I'm gonna talk right. to her. I'll meet with her, and we'll separate all that out, and then I'll get it back to, to uh, Helen and Maria. Well, and Chandler, um, if I might, uh, we could do a video conference with her then. Before, yeah, that, the four that, of us. That would be better. Yeah. Wouldn't that make sense? Because yeah. that way there, she'll yeah. understand what you're doing, and you're going to yeah. be getting the right figures? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because this certainly doesn't look right to me. Yeah. <laughs> Helen, if yes. we didn't have those special products from the town, we wouldn't need it. We wouldn't have needed any transfers from the town. If you didn't have those special projects, that's what we're trying to. That's what we're trying to figure out here. Right. Is, is this? Yeah. You, gotta, you have to remember one thing here. And I'm going to say it because I've been saying it over and over again. We have six, seven, you told me 700 customers right now. Mm -hmm. Right. When you try to increase the infrastructure for the town of Freetown, for example, that, that bypass was because mm -hmm. a company came in. They couldn't pass the fire suppression issue. Okay. They had mm -hmm. built a building approved by the town. And the 700 customers are not going to pick up the bill for an infrastructure change that benefits all taxpayers. Okay. That's the point here. You, un you oh. see what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. Yep. Very good. Yeah. And that's why we want to have this conversation today to make sure that we have our assumptions in there correctly. Yeah. It's interesting that 
uh, the study has been going on, but there has been no, I don't know if any, if you guys contacted any of the other water commissioners, but you certainly haven't talked to me about this. No, we were talking with Chandler directly about it. Um, so this is our opportunity to have a conversation now that we got all the data gathered. I would think in the future, when you do a study like that, you would talk to the people that are, I mean, Chandler's certainly responsible. Mm -hmm. But we're all on the same team, but you at least talk to the commission. So this is brand new to me. And right, we well, have to make the decisions. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So well, this is an initial meeting, an initial um, based on all the technical data, if you want to call it that. And then you guys can see what's here. They can present it. And then we figure out what we're missing or what needs to be adjusted and then go back, correct all that information and then um, present it again for approval. All right, so if we go back to the assumptions, so the one thing, um, no just no capital, um, I'm just gonna, so Maria, just, um, I know you're taking notes on this. Um, Could I, can I interject something here, please? This is yes, Lee Weinberg. Hi, Lee. Uh, I was just sworn in yesterday at 3 o'clock. Okay. Can somebody briefly tell me what precipitated this meeting? So the meeting, um, the town of Freetown requested environmental partners take a look at their current rates and determine what the rate structure should be for the um, coming three years uh, based on uh, the fact that, you know, there's historical increases from Freetown, from um, Fall River and New Bedford and obviously there's cost of living increases and so forth. So the goal is to make sure that um, at the end of the day, the enterprise fund is balanced on an annual basis. So what we had to do was call through um, data, all the um, water meter information. So there's 701 uh, currently customers uh, that you have in the water system. Uh, we had to cull all the data from 2016 to now in terms of all the water use on an annual basis. Um, and we had to put that into a digital format. We had it in a paper format, so we had to do it in a digital format. And um, that took a while. And then finalized some questions that we had with Chandler and the purpose of this meeting today was to talk about where we are, that we've called all the historical information together, that we've done a quick analysis to see, make sure the spreadsheets are working and everything makes sense. And then today we were going over some of the assumptions and some of the overall recommendations about rate structure moving forward, but we weren't going to talk necessarily about specific rates today because we weren't sure if all the assumptions were correct. So that's the intent, Lee, of this meeting with the backdrop of identifying what future rates are going to be. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Paul, Lee, and I know we had... Um, is there anybody else that uh, wants input at this point? And I can continue on some of the assumptions, but I think what we've called out of this conversation is that you currently do have retained earnings. So we need to know what the balance of those retained earnings are. And we need to understand how they get transferred and what historically the transfers have been into your revenue bucket from your retained earnings and that is going to require a video conference call with Chandler and Maria and myself and the accountant. Does that summarize it, Paul? Well, I think it does, but I think you missed the, uh, one of the important points was the special articles. Oh, the special articles, absolutely. The special articles, the reason for special articles are always for 
projects that are beyond just the uh, users themselves, but really for the benefit of the entire community. For example, any upgrades for commercial facilities that are needed because those commercial facilities provide tax base to the entire community and support the community, those projects and the capital associated with those get um, funded through special articles through the town, which right. is a fair and equitable way to treat the uh, water customers. Right, and, that's a, and that makes a significant difference in the, in the total expenditures right. that you're showing. That's right, yes. Okay. Uh, Helen, uh, you should include me on the list of people that get uh, that information when you send it, because I'm the chairman of the water commissioners. We would send this to everybody, sir. Is this, oh. I'm not sure who was talking. I can't see on my thing. Sorry. Uh, Bob, hi. Sorry, Bob, I didn't have you up. Um, Bob, anything we send along to Chandler on those, we would send to the entire commission. Absolutely. Okay. Bob, do you, Bob, do you think it would be reasonable for, for you or one of the other guys to sit in on the discussion with Kim? Yeah, probably you, Paul. You, you know more about the finances than uh, Lee or I, right? You know. Paul, I, I think it would be incredibly helpful if you could possibly do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think one of those. Go ahead. No, I, I was just saying. I think one of those expenses. This is Kevin. One of those expenses. I think was reimbursement for the pump house from the town. Yep, that's one didn't, of them. Didn't Kevin. that? Yeah, yeah. I think that was the one ninety four, if I'm not mistaken. So just keep that in mind when we're looking at the, that that's another one of those things that we paid out, but we got money back from the town, but I don't know if that was transferred to us so that we could pay that bill. So um, that's the only other one I can think of. Yeah, I don't think they transferred the whole amount to us, but you know. Yeah, I just, I don't know exactly how it was done. So it, what it looks like on paper, it, might be different but i think i think if paul and kim and chandler and all everybody sit down i think you're going to be fine with figuring out what we are really responsible for and, and what our true costs are going to be going forward right so i made a note of, of that so we'll catch that when with our conversation with the accountant kim right yes kim okay Okay, great. Um, let's go back to, so, um, assumptions. Uh, so we'll continue the anim, annual abatement for bleeders um, has been included starting 2021. Uh, and that's an important piece that needs to be taken into consideration um, in terms of um, revenue coming in. Uh, Fall River purchase water totals will increase to reflect the actual use due to new meter installation. We talked about that. So you will see some increase, but your water meter meters for your customers have been reflecting the appropriate water use. So um, that should not change. Um, Again, no new debt service. We're not assuming any new debt service moving forward in the coming years or any additional capital projects. And I think I'd stop there. You know, is there anything that the commission foresees in the next three years or so that um, in terms of capital projects? You have a fairly, compared to the rest of New England, I shall say, um, you have a fairly new water system. Um, so I'm, it, in our conversations with Chandler um, and um, the board initially, uh, when we first started this project, there wasn't um, any plans for any particular capital projects. Um, Paul or Bob or, or Lee, I don't know if you have any input on that. 
Yeah, we don't have any at this time. Uh, there is the industrial park, and we never know what's going to happen there. But they usually take care of that expense on their own. So right. <laughs> be good. Okay. Um, so I think I'm going to take this. This assumption is going to come out then because um, I just want to. Um, this is really. I'm just going to say transfers were either for water projects for the entire community. Benefit. I have to take a phone call for a second. Yep. Hi, Nicole. Okay. Also, Helen, for the um, the annual abatement for water uh, bleeding or flushing, um, for 2019, we're potentially yep. receiving a credit for $207,817. Um, we're still in the, you know, we're still in the middle of the 2020 season. That won't end till like November, beginning of December. So that could give you a rough idea. Annually. I'm back. Okay, so we had 49,000 here. And what did you do? Is um, leaders so started? If, if it's all, if it's, if Fall River's proposed uh, credit mm -hmm. is accepted by, yep. by the board, it would be two hundred and seven thousand eight hundred and seventeen dollars for two thousand nineteen. Okay. Um, Maria, can you write that down, and then we'll make those changes in here. Yep, I got that. Okay. Um, and the proposed for two. Actually, this goes back to the two thousand eighteen when we started this program. Yep. So that would be um, 2018 was, sorry, so small in this spreadsheet, 174857 Okay, all right. So Chandler, towards the beginning of the meeting, you mentioned the total credit was around 400,000. So those yeah. are the two breakouts. Yeah, that would be that. And then there's another uh, 53,000 so far for this year. Okay. I believe I, this, yeah. Okay. Well, all right. That, that, that credit sheet, I thought that went only through July, uh, June of uh, 2020. Right. Okay. That's what I said. Right. So far this year, it'd be 53,000. So far 000. this year. Yeah. yeah. Roughly. Okay. Okay. Are you, uh, by the way, are you guys doing this on a fiscal year basis or a calendar year basis? We do it on a quarterly basis because your billing is quarterly and it's a rolling, but we look at the water use on the, on an annual basis, but we're right. looking at your, your costs and so forth. It ends up being quarterly. So. No, we, like, it's example, a fiscal. This is your fiscal year, FY 2020. Yep. Okay, yeah. that's the fiscal year. Yep. Okay, all right, because we're into fiscal year 21 now. That's right. Okay. Yes, understood. So all the costs are on a fiscal year basis. Correct. Okay. All right. Um. Well, where, where Maria put that money isn't in the right slot. She put the, uh, I don't know where it went, but. Actually, fiscal uh, shoot. Shoot. Hmm? So, See that? 
because uh, 2019, 2019, it's a hundred and fifty something thousand, right? Yes. He, yeah, I didn't. I I said I'd update those um, a, as we go. I don't want. I I want to make sure that we. Um, so that will just uh, Chandler was. Uh, Maria wrote down the numbers, and we will add those. Yeah, sure. The, the 49 goes over in 2020, and there's a 150 something in two, uh, that's 2019. That, that's actually the bleeder volume, like the volume of water. The volume, yeah. Not oh, the, well, not I the, not the cost yeah. Statement. Yeah. I have a set. I'm not doing my screen share. Um, right. I'm taking notes on the side. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, if we can't do two screen shares at the same time, it starts getting a little wonky um, and can, can freeze up. So um, Maria's got those numbers. Okay. And that's why there's the two of us. <laughs> do you have um, the, do you have the, Helen, do you have the sheet that, uh, that, uh, Fall River provided us with the credits. There's a, there's a sheet that Chandler has that has the credits for the, uh, from uh, January of 2019 to uh, uh, June of two, June 30, 2020. Those are the, and it shows the, the usage and the credits that they're, they're giving us or they're proposing to us. So yeah, we haven't the, accepted them yet. No. Right. That's why I didn't send them over. Send it over because it wasn't accepted and finalized. Mm -hmm. But that's um, that. That's basically uh, what they're doing. So those will be probably pretty close to what we're going to agree to. Okay, so think, we can put we we can put them in as draft, Chandler. All right, I'm gonna. I'm sending that to you right now. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, we can continue on. Thank you, sir. Um, we're assuming no new equipment purchases, no new trucks, no new backhoes, um, nothing like that over the next four years. No, we don't do that. Okay. So here's an assumption. Here's one of the recommendations that we have, and I want to talk to you about it. It's um, considering changing your rate structure. So right now you just have um, base rate. Um, we're recommending an increasing block rate. So basically you have a charge. And what we're thinking is it, basically the theory is the people at the, if you use more water, you pay more for that extra water. So there's the average water user and they pay uh, a base fee um, based on their volume, of course. So it's ranges of volumes and charges per volume, okay? And then there's categories. So um, that's basically, um, this is not where, where I want to go. Roll up to the top of that page. <laughs> No, I want to go to where we show the numbers of people and the units. Um, is that where we show it? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, if you go into the account balances, we have that. Yeah, okay. So we were proposing, and again, um, why is it not doing this correctly? Okay, here we go. So we are proposing a rate structure that splits it into, this should be step three, um, into a base. So from zero to 25 CCUs a quarter, Step one would be anything over 25 to 50. Step two would be 50 to 200. And then step three would be greater than 200. And you can see here, based on the distribution of your accounts, that the base 
is 574 of your current customers. And this pretty much covers, you know, the larger percentage of your residential customers that use average water use. Then step two captures about 88 customers. I mean, step one in the step process covers 88, step two covers 29, and step three covers 10. Now the question you're gonna ask me is how did we come up with this? So we looked at, we had a list of all your customers, their addresses, um, and then we could, and the ownership. So we could tell which customers were residential and which ones were commercial. You do, you do not specify in your billing structure rate currently, whether or not they're residential or commercial. So we really didn't look at a separate residential and commercial structure. Um, it would require you to go through your whole billing program and try to codify which customers are residential and which ones are commercial. And I don't necessarily think that you need to do that based on the size of your facilities. But based on the number of your existing customers, you can get to um, that same strategy by looking at the 700 and saying, okay, the, the larger water users, which are those 10, are commercial. And so when you do set up a block rate, basically what you're doing is two things. One is to a certain extent incenting conservation. So not overusing water because as you use more water, the rates go up. And also for those that historically on a regular basis use water, pay a higher rate for that additional water. I'm gonna stop there for a minute. So that's that theory of block rate, which currently you just have a standard rate for water use. And I just wanted to get your collective um, opinions on that before we would ever move ahead with a, you know, a rate structure. Um, so, so that's what I would call the biggest recommended change after that, it's really just a question of how you want to structure your revenue and expenses to make sure they come in and how you want to, um, how much you really want to increase rates over the course of any given year. The real decision here is, do you want to move to a block rate um, analysis? And what that does is, it increases, and so this is just for, for trial perspective. We looked at a, a potential increase, not that we're recommending this at this point in time. I just wanted to show you what it would do. So basically, in a block rate, what you would be doing, say you were increasing the overall rates, I think, 10, was this 10%? Yeah, the first year. So. Yeah, so if we were to say 10%. 574 of your customers would get an increase in their rates in their rates of $20 a quarter versus as you start if you were to go for 10% now again I told you this isn't what we're re recommending I'm trying to show you how a block structure works and then the next group of people that use more water would be an additional 40 the next could be 100, and it depends on how you structure these increases. But you can see what the block rate structure is doing is it's charging the higher users more than the lower average user. And that's not unusual for most water utilities to structure a block rate to capture revenue in that way. There's a whole lot of decisions to be made once we decide to go to block rate. Then you have to decide how you're gonna break it up. You know, are you going to charge, you know, 50 cents more a gallon? However, we wanna do that. Um, and that would be a whole other topic of conversation. And Paul, I think that would be one that we'd wanna take with 
um, you and Chandler and really have a, a working, um, you know, a, a working meeting on this so we could come up with some options. I have a question. My, my, opinion, my opinion is I'm opposed to that type of a, a situation. Uh, is that so you, Bob? I don't, uh, I, I don't like that idea at all. Uh, I have a concern. Did you say an increase of $20 for the, for base zero, $20 a quarter? Yes. Yes, that's if it was, I just said f I was trying to show a perspective on what a block rate structure would look. That would be if you raised your rates 20%, you're not, 10%, you're not going to raise your rates 10%. Well, first of all, at this point, the income and expenses that, that were presented earlier are not correct at this point. We don't know if those figures are accurate because we don't have the right data. So I don't know how we can get to this point without knowing what the prior point is. You know what I'm talking about? Well, it, we don't need to talk about the increases right now. What I'm trying to have the conversation, Paul, about is whether or not you would consider going from a base rate to a block rate. So that's what... And the reasoning behind it is that the larger water users would pay slightly more. And depending on, once we pinpoint the expenses based on that, if the increase is say two or 3% that you have to do to come into balanced budget, then we could start looking at what that looked like. I mean, I, you know, we can easily put that in here. You know, and then the question becomes, so there's a number of charges that you have right now. And I think that I'd like to talk about that is so you have under your existing revenue, you have a service fee of $3.70, which was reduced a number of years ago from $13.69. And your current rate per CCU is 6.7. Your new service connection fees are 700. And that's been consistent since 2016. And so that's your current revenue structure. So it's a flat rate. And what we're saying is to, you might want to consider a block rate based on the water uses that we see for your current customers. So we see for your current customers a large disparity between your average um, residential customer and the commercial customers. And it's not unusual to charge more for a bigger water use, a volume. Um, another way to capture it is by size of connection. Um, size of connection is a little more complicated for Freetown to go to because you don't have, um, it, we'd have to go through and create a billing program for you that would capture the size of the service connections for each of your customers to determine what category they went in. And I'm not recommending that we go that complicated at this point in time. I am recommending that you look at some kind of block rate structure. Well, Helen, Helen can I ask a question? Yes. Ch Chandler, that, that service fee of $3.69 at 370, when is that due to go back up to 1369? That was reduced for five years to pay back the monies that the customers 
had paid for the booster pump station. Right. So I we do to go back up. This so year, I, I and, and it, the non-information needs to get over to them also. So the convert. So we did have the conversation with Chandler, and um, it was my understanding that the intent is to bring that thirteen seventy back by um, over the course of a few years, or is it just automatically coming back? That was the question. Okay. So we had it. We had it slowly r ratcheting up, um, and if it's to begin back in 2021, I think it went supposed to go back till the, the full 1369 in 2021. I think it was a five-year payback for the customers that. Uh, had to pay for the pump station and they really weren't supposed to right it, it was it was implemented i believe in 2015 it was the fall before i got here in the winter of 2016 from the, if i remember correctly my understanding is it was going to once once that recovery was done it was going to go back to the regular rate regular rate so uh, is that a kim question then no that's no. a commission okay. question Okay, so that's a, um, so I'm we could, go back and, we could go back and check the motion. We could go back and check the motions from the meeting where we, we did all this. We could confirm when the, they're due to go back up and yeah. how they were due to go back. Right, right. That's right. That's what I need to know, I guess. I'm sorry. That's exactly what I need to know. Um, we, um, didn't know what that was, so we had it going up over the course of the next three years. Certainly, we can add that in, and that will make a difference in terms of what your rate structure is. You, you know, that will impact things, absolutely. That, that, uh, that reduction was due to the fact that a pump station had to be established as a result of a suit, okay, by the community in that area. And correct me, anybody that's listening, if I'm wrong, and it was brought against the town. The town had to put a pump station in, okay? And what happened was, at one point in time, the cost of the pump station, the bonding and the interest, all of, when, they, when they went from a town department to an enterprise fund, they shifted that cost to the, 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 the suit was brought against the town for bad water, it was a town department, okay? When it went to an enterprise fund, they shifted that cost to the 600 customers at the time. This mm -hmm. was to reimburse the 600 customers for charges that were not theirs. And that's why it's been done this way. Now, it's, if, we're, if we've caught up with, with those costs, then it, my remembering, and, and you got to check the minutes, is that it goes back to the original rate. Great. Yeah, you're oh. yeah. Yeah, it was it was forty dollars. It was two hundred dollars a customer we were giving back. And Paul, you hit the nail on the head. Exactly, that's exactly what happened. Yep. And it was forty dollars a year reimbursement back to the for five years to the tune of two hundred dollars a customer. And and it was to Bob's point, your point. I think it's to go up to the full thirteen sixty nine. So at least that conversation was had, and and they're con going to consider it now. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I think the biggest conversation I would like to have is going back to the consideration of a block rate or not. Um, and so I believe Bob, you were saying that you're you um, that that's not some that you have some concerns about that. And I, I would love your input. I would certainly uh, discuss it and and. Uh, and see that, but I, I really don't, uh, you know, I don't, I really don't think we ought to uh, charge people that use more and more money. You know, in normal business areas, if you buy a lot of stuff, you get a better price. So, I, and I understand this is a municipality and all, but I, I, I'm myself, I'm opposed to sort of punishing people if they use more uh, water. I, I wouldn't be yeah. opposed 
uh, we I wouldn't be opposed to a com- to considering a commercial rate and a residential rate. Okay. So that may be one thing, but uh, I, I'm I, I'd look at it. I I you know I, mm-hmm. I uh, and the rest of the, the other two commissioners we'd all look at it and make a decision. I, I wouldn't scratch it right off completely, but initially I'm I'm not in favor of of uh, that block rate situation. So Bob, I'm hearing when we sit down um, next um, to have a conversation with Paul, um, that one of the things we'll do is we'll look at, um, we'll figure out who your commercial um, large water users are then, um, and we'll try to go from there. Um, and show you what that might look like versus a block rate. Does that versus what you're using now? So there's basically three options um, standard rate per CCU, that's what the rate would be, um, residential commercial rate, and a potential. Um, block rate that might not have as many steps potentially. So um, capture more of the larger users. We could look at that. Bob, could I ask you a question at this point? Sure. What's the rationale that people use a block rate, number one? Secondly, as you know, our system buys water from two municipalities. The rates are different. The requirements our requirements tend to be different. If you've analyzed what goes on in a sonnet, uh, a sonnet, uh, we have to pay a lot more attention to a sonnet, especially because we have to bleed water and so forth. Um, it, have you? It, is there any thought into maybe having rates for the two separate parts of town? That's one thing I'd like you to think about. Secondly. Um, I'd like to know the rationale for block rates as compared to what Bob just mentioned, commercial versus resi- residential. So um, commercial versus residential gets to some of the um, block rate approach. So it's the charging um, extra for larger users with the theory that, you know, people, if there's more water being used, potential infrastructure improvements might be required and um, it's more of a, um, of a challenge for the community. Particularly, um, it's used often for communities, and again, you purchase your water. So you have currently agreements with those two communities, Fall River and New Bedford, that allow you to take X amount of water from them. Um, So part of a block rate structure is to balance water use throughout the system and make sure that water isn't being um, overused to the point that you have source supply issues. So that's another reason for a block rate structure. Um, The commercial, versus residential, they're larger, larger water meters, there's more um, management associated with those and that's why there's the um, commercial residential and that might be a better way for you to go. Uh, and you could look at size of meters later on. Uh, if you wanted to go <clears throat> to a difference between um, water use you could charge a different service fee based on size of meter, which is another approach. (laughs) Unfortunately, there's a lot of different approaches and a lot of theories behind them. Um, I think for your community, um, unless you're planning on going to a more complicated billing structure, which they go hand in hand, the more complicated your rate, structure, the more complicated the information that you have to provide for your customers in your billing so you can track it. So that's the cost 
um, benefit balance. And for Freetown, because you you really don't, um, you're buying all your water from, a, from two separate entities, my recommendation is that you don't necessarily get a real complicated billing structure put in place. I don't think it's worth your investment and I wouldn't recommend that. So right now, I think um, for you to look at it, I would recommend the residential commercial potentially for you then over the block rate as the first approach for changing from a base rate structure to a multiple volumetric um, charge structure. That's based on our conversation, that's what I'm hearing. Um, and that speaks to the equity issue of, um, there are some water users that are commercial, that are, you, that are residential, that are using a lot of water. And so um, some of those are being captured in some of the steps and you might not want that to occur. And I'll stop for the moment so you can um, weigh in. So we could, we could consider commercial if we choose that, if you use X amount of CC use a year, whether it's in a house or a building, a commercial building. If you use more than, let's just say a thousand CC use a year, then you're in the commercial end. If you if you just like the regular customers, then that would be the end. That would that would be a way to determine uh, who's commercial and who isn't. So um, still have some people running businesses out of their residence, you know, that are using a lot of water. So mm -hmm. you know, we could figure on a certain amount of CCU put you in a commercial category. So That's what we could, that, that would be one way, Bob. I mean, so we could call it a step, you know, we could just call it a step one. That way you're not necessarily labeling it commercial. So we have a base rate and a step one. And you go into the step one if your flows, if you use over X amount. And we could have one right. step. And that step could be, see, it, um, right now what I have up is the account balances where we show that block rate structure. And we have, so 574 of your customers um, fall into what we would suggest is your base rate. So that's your between zero and 25 CCUs a quarter. And then we split it up into blocks here. So what we could do, is put um, the limit at say 50 CCUs a quarter and that would capture 39 customers. And we could go back and see what 39 of those are and um, tell you if they're mostly commercial or not. Oh yeah, Chandler knows who, what, I, what who's commercial and yes. who's not. Right, yeah. so, so I'm, I'm I'm thinking that we combine these two as your next step, as your step one. So Maria, then this would mean zero to, fi to 50 here, and then 50 and above would be your step one. Is that what you're thinking, Bob? Yeah, something like that. I you know, I'd have to figure mm. up with how many CCUs is what, but yeah, just it's, it's something like that. Yeah. Okay. What we'll do is when we get those expenses finalized, we'll start with this as the approach. All right. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, to a, lot of, to a lot of our regular customers, um, you know, there's a lot of retired people here in Freetown, you know, and to them, $20 a quarter, you know, is, is a big jump. 
It is a big so, jump. So, so Bob, have you have you considered senior and low income discounts as part of your structure at all? Um, no, we haven't. I don't believe that we talked about that at all. Um, that might be something you want to have a conversation about. Uh, maybe not for this rate setting period. Well, but, no, but it, that's a good idea to talk about it. Yes. I mean, that's really, so there's, there's a, a, a number of communities do use that approach. Um, and there's some requirements that people have to provide in order to, you know, show that they're in that category. So it can get, you know, it, it starts adding on the um, operations end of things in terms of time for your, um, whoever is the person that's going to be gathering the data and um, putting that's it into the system. That's Chandler. He doesn't have anything to do anyway. So he, he could do that. <laughs> and then, uh. I'm sure that Paul would like it because he's old and he would have, like to have a senior rate for the water. <laughs> I just got back. I had to take a stroll. But uh, I think uh, that I think uh, the two water commissioners that uh, that have water are both seniors. That would be a great idea. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Helen. Um, yeah. Well, I have to pump my own water. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just, as a, as a general thought, right, we have a couple of high-end water users that are commercial, right? Yeah. Uh, and we start talking about these blocks, and the more water you use, the more um, the more money you're going to pay. And, and you know, we've, we've always, as a, as, a, as a system, kind of balked at conservation measures because to oversimplify, uh, oversimplify it, the more water we sell, the more money we make, the less we have to rely on outside monies and we can we can offer a better product with better services but at the same time we don't want to get so expensive that we encourage these higher volume users to go to private wells for their thing and, and, and all and so uh, i just with the block rate stuff that's great when you have a huge commercial base uh but if we have i'll, I'll take isp uh, or um, aspen chemical they on a daily basis use what the entirety of a sonnet uses typically on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We put an over reliance on large commercial to make up a, a sizable portion of our revenue. It then puts us at the mercy of should they decide to leave or seek an alternate water source, where does that leave us? So I, I know you said, yes, typically they do that in some instances. They do it uh, the other way, you know, descending mm -hmm. rates. The more you volume you use, the less money and rates you have to pay. I know right. some communities require separate meters on, on their sprinkler systems, and they charge different rates. Right. But as far as getting the information relative to meter size, we pretty much have all that in the computer. It, it might take it a little bit, but we can probably get that for the bulk of the large commercial facilities and commercial uh, water users in town so we could probably prov provide some of that information but i just know even prior to this board it's always been a concern that we don't want to price people out of using our water and then they're they're inspired to go you know sink their own well and and now we get no revenue from that but yet we still have the same amount of infrastructure that we're responsible for totally understand that and that's why i want to have this conversation about where do you you know where do you draw the line and maybe it's you know and what percentage is it so um, right. and just and just to be clear I, i'm not a water commissioner i just work for them so i may be way off base they're listening to it they probably would have told me to shut up by now if they didn't like what i was saying but um i i just just keep that in mind i i i, I'm, I bring a little bit of a historical perspective because i've been here for about 12 years to what conversations prior to some of these board members particularly lee and Paul, who are, are relatively new. Uh, no, in, in, so. in Kevin, Kevin, I really appreciate your input. I mean, it's certainly important to have that. 
um, and, uh -huh. and, 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 and that is always a concern. A, a concern for many communities is once you start going to block, is there um, a potential to lose the commercial even? I think Kevin, another community. Make, Kevin makes a really good point. Mm -hmm. And I've always been of the opinion is that these departments, departments that service the taxpayer, <clears throat> are there to serve, serve the taxpayer, cover their expenditures, and not make a, a profit, okay? Mm -hmm. Or make mm -hmm. a, enough of a small profit to cover unexpected expenses, okay? And that's exactly. always been my philosophy as a selectman and on the Water Commission as the mm -hmm. town treasurer for many years. But we all respect Kevin because he's known in town as the mayor of Freetown. I know it's a bit, Paul. Remember, I read your meter, Paul. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt, Helen. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're, no, you're not. You're, you're absolutely not. This is a, an open conversation. And as I stated before, I wanted this to be a workshop. Um, you know, sure. COVID has certainly not made it easy for us all to no. have our, our usual no. interactions. And I think that that right. is definitely clear here, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, and, and that's certainly part of it. Um, so, so I think what, um, if you um, would entertain this, I think what I will do is um, we'll look at what it looks like as just a base rate, one step, the base um, number, and then we'll take a quick look at a two-step with your larger water users with a reasonable difference in fee per CCU, not in, you know, anything extraordinary. And then we can look at the impact of those to your customers, because that's, that's why we looked at account balances. What are, what are you currently paying? What are you going to be currently paying? Because at the end of the day, that's really what we need to look at when we're setting these rates to make sure that your customers um, aren't seeing sticker shock um, unreasonably, right? And that's really, you know, the goal of this. And um, we're gonna, you're gonna continue to maybe think about the senior, I, I don't know where you wanna go with a, a senior rate. Paul, Paul, you were out when this conversation came up about the concern certainly of, the impact of raising rates on um, senior and low income in the community. And um, certainly a number of communities out there in their rate structure uh, that I'm familiar with have included um, potential discounts on the senior um, and low income. It does require some um, confirmation paperwork from the customer in order to do that. and does impact costs of operations and tracking. Um, and we were just having the conversation around potential um, consideration of that maybe later on or, um, but I did not include it in um, the model at this point in time. I, I would think that um uh, you could probably put that in as a separate line just to see how it would impact. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that just because you're over a certain age, you should get a discount, but it certainly does apply to people that don't have a lot of income and are struggling just to meet their taxes. And we have some, el we have a lot of elderly people, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the community, and when, when you hear that they're having trouble and they're thinking of selling their house because they got to move out because mm -hmm. it's too expensive, that shouldn't be after these people have spent so many years in town and mm -hmm. were the backbones of the community. So I would, mm -hmm. I would entertain something like that, but I would think that um, 
certainly uh, people that are well off that are seniors, you know, shouldn't, should pay their way. You know what I mean? So we're talking about low income rate then yes, potentially. That's, that's what yeah. I would think. Yes. So, so some kind of consideration for low income rate. Um, what are the, um, Bob and Lee, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think we should certainly consider it and discuss it. Uh, you know, I mean, we're open to discussing and looking at yep. everything. Okay. You know, so, yes. So, so, so adding it to the model and. Sure. Yeah, I concur with that. Oops. Okay, great. My, my spelling. Interesting factoid in all of this is that when we were looking at senior housing, we had some land that was recovered. And looking at senior housing, and when we were th trying to figure out how we were going to get financing for it, uh, we looked at the state and federal guidelines, and a lot of them had to do with senior income. And after doing that study, whoever the gal was that did the studies uh, concluded that the seniors in Freetown made too much money for any assistance from the state or the federal government for senior housing. Mm -hmm. So, which was a shock to everybody. Their income, average income was around 50,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, although there are several yeah. that are being taxed out of the town, with no doubt, but... Uh, right. And, yeah, uh, and, and, and you there yeah. are seniors like Mr. Sadek and Mr. Baumgartner and Mr. Uh, our, our esteemed chairman who uh, have so much money it becomes a pain in the neck to spend it. <laughs> hey, okay. I, I, know, I know where you can leave a couple of the bags of it if you'd like. But <laughs> Lee, you're, you're absolutely correct and it's made it difficult for us to even get some of the uh, Rural Water Association grants and all for water expansion and all, and just our yeah. community as a whole uh, is, is just a tick above that line that makes us eligible. And uh, we tried years ago, like Paul probably remembers, uh, Mike Pillarillo, we tried to get the water line to the school. They were having issues, and we went through the whole exercise of how many reduced lunches we had, and, and we just found out that we we just weren't poor cool enough. And that, you know, to Lee's point, and you know, unfortunately, uh, some good good people don't get the benefits because we're just not poor enough. Right, because you know, of the average, you know, yeah, yeah. The right, answer yeah. to that, hey Kevin, the answer to that yeah. is for Mr. Sadik to donate half his money to charity. That would kick us below that that marginal line. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you guys, you guys have to remember that I'm controlling the meeting, and in a second, I'm going to press the button and terminate the meeting if, if, this, okay. if this harassment continues. Harassment, right. So let's, <laughs> so let's move Sorry, on. Alan, we, we get a little punch drunk after an hour. I'm not going to lie to you. It happens That's every time. It's not a problem. Moving on. Helen, I, yeah. I, I have one thing I have one thing more. Yeah. Right. This is a very serious matter. No. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Very, very serious matter. Okay. Chandler, did you tell her about that wooden water line that has to be replaced? Oh, I forgot all about it. Awesome. I have I have a, a I have a piece of a wooden water main from Boylston Street on a project I worked at. Believe it or not, guys, I've been I've been do I've been working in the consulting industry for forty years. Wow. Um, so um, so <laughs> I started you put, with, so you put the water and water line in then. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so Paul, is there really a, a no, is it really no, one no, in the ground? No, no, no. no, no, no. Paul, no, no, no. you no. had me all excited. I is, <laughs> no, nothing exciting about. Oh, there's nothing exciting about a wooden line. Oh, no. You never know. Oh, no. You never know. You had me lock, stock, and barrel because I have seen them in real life. I, and I it's got you. Hey, listen. I, I, this thing, this meeting was only scheduled for two hours. Okay, so yep. I'm going to shut up from now on. Okay. <laughs> you don't have right. to. <laughs> 
Paul, I'll call on you when I need need something specific. How's that? <laughs> she'll, she'll never call on me again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. That was true. Uh, I know, that's good. <laughs> um, okay, so um, retained earnings, we've been through that already. You have it, and we will get that at it. Oh. Um, all right, that sounds better. Um, we didn't, one of the things during our conversation, as you can tell, is we're talking a lot about water, but not sewer. I mean, sewer, you have two users, you have <laughs> charges, and you have to keep up with those charges, and you pass them along with a markup for your O&M to provide the service to your customers. So I, I didn't get into any uh, gory details like I did on the water infrastructure. Um, and because your O&M costs are all in one bucket, water and sewer rates are considered revenue into that one bucket. So we don't have separate O&M charges for sewer because operations also includes your billing, um, any kind of service that you provide on the O&M. So they do have to, um, the sewer charges will have to cover some of that. Um, I think the real big conversation here is the water rates and how we're going to structure them and what those increases are. The sewer rates will pretty will only go up based on what Fall River is charging, and then any cost of living on your O and M charges that typically occur, and any other O and M charges. Um, so currently, as we said, you have your rate structure is a service fee, a connection fee, um, retained earnings, and volumetric rate. And we're going to say now, you know, it might be a block rate, it might not be. Um, on the connection fee, you've been charging $700 for that. Typically, the cost of the connection fee should cover any of the um, initial setup of that um, customer account, any physical work that needs to be done externally in the system. Uh, and my only question to Chandler and others is, that hasn't been increased for a number of years. Are you capturing the costs currently or not? Um, and so, you don't necessarily separate it out as a line item. Um, what I've seen um, in other communities is up to $1,000 on the connection phase. So that was one of the conversations I wanted to have about whether or not you want to increase. So we talked about the service fee, increasing it back to the 1369, we're going to confirm that based on the um, uh, the water commissioner's vote. Okay. Um, now the question is the connection fee. Do you want to continue to carry it at 700, Chandler and Kevin? I guess I'd defer to the two of you in terms of the true cost of um, doing a connection. Yeah. So the, 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 the connection fee years ago was dictated basically through an IMA contract with, with Fall River, and there was our local connection fee and then what we paid. We did an examination at the time, and to Paul's point, it was a look at what's the cost, what, what do we provide, and what are they paying? And so what do they get for the $700? They get three inspections and they get the cost of the meter. The meter's around $300 and then they get three inspections for me. Uh, typically it's gonna be the trench inspection. Once they put the water line in, I make sure that's installed, it's pressure check. And then I do a final inspection for the meter, meter installation. So if you're asking my opinion, without sitting down and put pencil to paper, I believe the $700 covers that. The fourteen hundred dollars would be an extreme. I mean, I, I I don't know how we could charge that 
you know, Helen, the, the problem, I've looked at other towns, rate fees and fee schedules and all, mm-hmm. and oftentimes it's just some of these rates and these fees just feel like a way, an easy way for the customer to have to, well, or the, or the, the, uh, the commission or the department to make more money. And oftentimes these in other towns, these businesses or residents don't have a choice, right? They have to connect to, they can't think of, well, they don't have the, the area they have, they can't, you know, so they, they have a very captive audience. So, uh, but I think here where we have viable choices, um, you know, you don't want to scare people at a time when I hooked up, it was like $2,800 just for the privilege of, of attaching, uh, uh, you know, my, my meter to the line that was already in my house. And I think, I think years ago, they, 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 they really took a hard look at that and said that, you know, $700 for me to be out there, a total of maybe three hours most. And that covers the cost of me and a machine, or I mean, me and the truck to be there. And then the cost of the meter. So the $700, if you're asking our opinion, or my opinion, at least, I, I think that covers the cost of that. Hey, Kevin. Again, I've had people come. Yes, yeah, sir. Can I ask a simple question? Typically, how many new customers attached to our line each year? New customer, we've been averaging, I think, about five or six a year. It's yeah. not a, we, we, it's, it's not a right. bunch, right? We're, it, right. It's, not, it's not a way that we're going to make up, you know, money. Typically, uh, if there was going to be a new uh, subdivision that comes in, uh, we charge for the system development fee, which is a sizable amount of money depending on the length of the line. Then there'll be individual connection fees by the homes that do that. And mm-hmm. so that typically covers those types of things. Um, With some profit. Right. So yeah, I want to yeah, make it, exactly. yeah. Right. I want to make it clear here that the intent of setting these rates will be that you can maintain your um, your enterprise funds such that at the end of the day, your expenses are met and that you have some retained earnings for unanticipated events. There are many ways that we can put that together. So what is the connection fee, Kevin? And you're very right. I, my question is, yeah, there are other communities that I work with that the true connection fee costs more in the vicinity of $1,300. If that's not the case here, in 700 more than covers your fee, there's no reason for us to increase it at this point in time. And I would suggest that we could leave that and really focus on making sure that your retained earnings percentage is where it needs to be. And you can just set a retained earnings to make sure that consistently you have that balance available. And you can do that based on what you've seen over the years of unanticipated costs and what you've been transferring on an annual basis from that. And that was my intent of using the retained earnings is to not be transferring necessarily because I thought that that was a general fund. But if it's in your retained earnings, you're already doing that. So we need to understand what your balance of retained earnings uh, is and make sure that we're maintaining the balance that you want for the rainy day funds, as we call them. Right. You have to have rainy day funds. Everybody has to have something in there. And unfortunately, a lot of people personally don't have rainy day funds. Municipalities need some buffer there. You can't always predict what the new rate is going to be from Fall River in New Bedford. And sometimes you have to act quickly and you can't act quickly enough to buffer. Um, It's been averaging 6% a year from Fall River and 4% a year from New Bedford. Um, so you want to make sure that your um, future revenues are are bouncing uh, are increasing along with that. That's how we're trying to structure this. Um, so so seven hundred. Um, I just need to understand if it does cover your expenses now, and if it does, I think we're good. And if I could yeah. just also mention, there's a, a another connection fee. 
um, which is that seven hundred dollars is if there's a curb stop existing outside of right. the home or the business. Right. And we have the other one if it's not, correct. Right. And that right. means we have to dig, add in, add a curb stop, and there's that increased expense. Now, right. most people, most residences um, and businesses along our water route have curb stops. There's a few that don't for various reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but, we, but we'll find that the majority do have a curb stop out front. Right, and Maria, what was that? What is the charge currently for the um, without um, that you have? A thousand. A thousand, right? Or fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred. So that's the fourteen hundred. Okay, so one inch. Uh, fourteen hundred. If it's a one inch standard tapping fee, again, keeping in mind that we don't do any of the work. All we do is do an inspection. Yeah. So. So, and, and what we have is a charge of $700 per inch for tapping. Now, of course, tapping, I'm out there during the duration of the excavation tapping and the backfilling. So I'm out there for the duration of that. So that's a longer time. So it, it like the other day we had one, it was a multi-day event. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, but there was a six inch tapping fee and their permit fee was $4,200, right? Or whatever it was. And so that covers me being out there. Um, you know, one thing to just keep in mind is, is years ago we had a, we had a ten dollar maintenance fee and three dollars and sixty nine cents, I think, meter fee. Or over the years, it's got combined and called the same thing. We probably should look at some of the some of the uh, facilities that have these large meters, these multi thousand dollar meters. We need to make sure that either through volumetric use or through uh, their meter fee slash quarterly uh, uh, service fee that we're, we're bringing in enough money over uh, a 10 year period, say, to be able to do a meter replacement um, for that facility. You know, we, only, we don't want to only take in $500 over, over 10 years, but their meter costs $4,000 to replace. That doesn't make sense. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Right? And that, so, mm -hmm. so we talked about earlier about the difficulties there might be in finding who has what size meter. Most of that information is in the computer system already. I don't want to speak for Chandler. It may be a little, it may be a little bit of difficult to get, but for the most part, we probably could get a, a good idea of who's got bigger meters, where they're located, and, and what volume of water they use. Um, because you don't want, we're in a situation now where some of these mm -hmm. meters are going to come up to be replaced. Um, and we're going to have to reach in our pockets to do it, I guess, or we're going to have to turn around at the time and then charge the customer. And I know the customers in the past have said, well, what have I been paying a meter fee for? So right. Right. maybe there's something to look at in those few select cases where we have meters that are over the two inch meter, say. So, so that was one of the things um, I had talked about earlier is the, the size uh -huh. meter perspective. So I think on the service fee, we could look at, um maybe one or two steps depending on i want to look at this um the varying sizes that that you have and um sure. it'll at least be one if not um two but i i think that 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 is a good way to capture that kevin absolutely okay so i think what uh, we've said here is oh chandler go Oh, no. No, I'm good. Oh, okay. So I think what we've said here is we're going to keep the 700 because that certainly covers the, the your costs right now um, and continues to, which is great. And then um, the 1400 on the without, if the curb stop is non-existent and it has to be put in. And then we're going to look at um, a distribution of service connection fees to make sure we're covering um, a larger, I, not the service connect, connection fee, the, the, meter um, fee. Sorry, the meter fee, thank you, Kevin, the meter fee um, for the uh, large meters. And the board's uh, familiar with that, right? We get the meter fee oh, yeah. from New Bedford and Fall River on our inbound meters, and we always yeah. look at them and go, what the heck, but it's, it's so that when those meters go, they have the money to replace those meters and to do continued right. testing and that kind of thing. Right, stuff. exactly. So I mean, we do have those sizes, Chandler. You gave that to us in the, the distribution, in the um, PDFs that we got. Yeah. Okay. 
That was a good idea. Yep. Yeah, we have uh, Sean and Jeff and Dave etc. on our plate for discussion already. And uh, um, we were kind of waiting because we lost one of our members until we got Lee on board. We don't do that. Okay, so we can have that connection fee discussion will be can be part of the overall service uh, overall rate discussion. Um, okay, so we're going to leave it at 700, 1500 at meter size distribution. Size four. All right. Service fee. Okay. Chain earnings. Um, the sewer rate, again, the strategy there is just use the flat rate. Um, you only have two sewer users until such time as you're looking at expands, expanding the sewer system and want to try to fund that or whatever that's a whole other conversation um, and I know that the plans there's no plans currently to do that um, okay I think that um, and so there we assumed, oh, the only other assumption I wanted to go through is, so the two, two things were basically, we're assuming five additional water customers a year. You don't seem to be adding any more than that. Um, we never, yeah, it's not, and there's no subdivision on, uh, or anything uh, right now right. that is both commercial and or residential that would add uh, a, 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 uh, too many more uh, connections. Right. Right. right, right. So we just um, continued on that assumption, and we're assuming there's no no new sewer connections coming anytime soon. There's one. There's there's one, but again, um, Helen, you've got, you've been down to our sewer site, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, the sewer pump station. I meant that. So there's another building that's being built on that uh, larger parcel that will be connecting in. But again, it's all private through there until it gets out into the road. Um, but no, the, the rental, there is no sewer connection readily available other than a uh, short stretch of a quarter mile from the Fall River line where it's gravity fed only where I think there's a half a dozen homes. Uh, and none of them to date have chosen to, uh, to hook up. So no, nothing significant that's going to be uh, of concern, I think, for your purposes. Right, right. Um, so again, the, the thing about putting this model together is you'll be able to use this once we have it in place, you'll be able to update and use it regularly to track and see where you're going. So um, I think that'll be, help, that'll be helpful um, moving forward too. So you can see the impact of things. Um, and that's it for now. So I think we have a game plan to move forward. I really appreciate um, your time. Before we sign off, though, I want to make sure that there's nothing additional um, that the commissioners would like to um, say. And I'm sure, you know, if you're going to continue your meeting, we can stay on as well. Oh, I, I think we're, we're good for our meeting at the time. Um, uh, we're going to have a recording of this anyway, so I, I, on my side, I'm pretty good. I don't know about Paul and Lee. They could certainly chip in. I think one of the things, this is Lee, I think one of the things you have to take into consideration is the fact that Freetown's population is pretty much flat, hasn't changed a lot in 10 right. years. So you yeah, can't, that's true. you're not projecting a 10% or 20% increase in population here. It isn't going that's, to change. Right. That's why we're only looking at maybe 
we're estimating maybe five customers a year, if yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Thank you for that input, Lee. How about you, Paul? I'm good. Paul, you I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion. I'll second it. I'll make the motion to, to adjourn. All Please. in favor? Well, somebody needs a second. Lee seconded it. Okay. Right. Uh, Wake Parker up so he can make the motion. And All, in <laughs> All in favor, Paul? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye, and I. Meeting is officially adjourned. Well, well, well you got to take a roll call. <laughs> you got to take a roll call. Okay. All right, Paul. Yes. Lee. Yes. Myself. Yes. Uh, meeting is officially adjourned. Okay. Thank you, Helen and Marie. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Helen, Maria. And Thanks. I'll see you guys. Have a good night. I'll be Let us. That information. Yeah, let us know when Kim's available. We can, um, sooner rather than later, it'd be great. So we can have another. Okay. Make, okay. Sure, I, make sure I'm available because yes. next week I've got yeah. a couple of things that I have to. I'll, I'll, ne next week is a busy week for me. Okay. okay. For me, Chandler. All right. All right. All right. Listen, well, with, the amount, with the amount of money you make as a water commissioner, you think you can make yourself <laughs> available. <laughs> Well, let, let's, let, before I shut off the tape, let everybody know that the water commissioners, all water commissioners are volunteer. We do not get paid. Right. And, and with that, yep. I'm going to, I'm going to say I'll goodbye. I'll get off to, myself uh, too. I'll see I'm going to say goodbye. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.